Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another Radio Control Info video. Now in today's video, we are going to be talking about censored motors versus sensorless motors. Some of the subtopics of this, we're going to be looking exactly how each one of them work. We're going to be looking into the advantages of a censored brushless motor and the advantages of that sensorless brushless motor. We're then going to be looking at the applications of each one of them. So let's get started. So when we're talking about a brushless motor, one of the first things that come to mind is what feeds that motor. Well, if we look back in our power system components, the Components that feed that brushless motor is of course our battery and our electronic speed control. We get power from the battery and that gets sent to our electronic speed control. From there, power pulses are sent down to the brushless motor and that's what allows it to operate. Now depending on what type of motor you end up having, whether it's censored or sensorless, that's where things become a little bit different. So in a sensorless motor, what we have is of course no sensors, hence the name sensorless. And what this really means is that that brushless speed control has to send a bunch of power down to the motor. And of course it sends one pulse to the motor and you get some rotation of the rotor on the brushless motor. What then happens is you get what is known in the industry as back EMF. This is also known as back electromotive force. This force really just equates to voltage. Just to simplify all that terminology, it's really just a voltage signal that gets sent back to the electronic speed control. From there, the speed control is able to determine what is going on in the rotor. However, time is taken between when it sends that pulse, it gets sent back, and then it's able to correct its position based on the electrical pulses. It's What it's trying to do is get in sync with that rotor. As you're turning, that speed control needs to send the correct pulse at the correct time at the correct position in order to actually get a continuously running motor. So this process takes time. It doesn't just send one pulse and it's got it going. It, it may send many over the course of, you know, just a few um, tenths of a second we're talking about. That's essentially in a nutshell how the sensorless motors are operating. Now when we talk about a censored motor, it's very different. So the speed control still sends that power pulse down to the motor, but the difference is there's sensors in that motor and those sensors know the position of the rotor. When the rotor position is known, it sends that information back to our electronic speed control, in which case every pulse of power that comes down to the motor is a perfectly timed pulse. And what you're going to get is you're going to get excellent startup acceleration right from zero RPM. There's not going to be any stutter that you would typically see in a sensorless motors. Anyone who operates a sensorless motor knows that there is some sort of stutter that occurs. And that stutter is because of the synchronization. You need perfect synchronization to have a smooth acceleration. You can also refer to the video that we last did. It's common in the industry to mistake this for cogging. Now cogging, if you don't know what that is, you can refer back to our previous video in which we talk about that. So what kind of advantages do we have from a censored motor? Well, a censored motor, of course, has that wire loom that comes from the brushless motor and goes into the speed control. That's going to be consisting of a bunch of different wires in it. It also has the three power wires that we're um, quite familiar with that also come from the speed control and going to the motor. So what we have with our censored motor is we have great acceleration right down from zero RPM. It's going to be smooth, it's going to be consistent, and it's going to be predictable. Uh, the next thing that we can look at is the torque that is applied. Right from zero RPM, censored motors are going to be able to apply a tremendous amount of torque, you know, much more than a censored, sensorless motor. So we get both speed in the acceleration from zero RPM being consistent and predictable, and then we also get a great amount of torque at lower RPM, you know, specifically from zero and slightly above that. So that's going to be very critical when we start talking about the applications. Uh, other pieces of information that we get is some brushless speed controls uh, may not actually operate the motor if they know that something is wrong with the brushless motor. And they would be able to tell based on sensors that are obviously in the censored motors. Uh, the last little bit of information that you may be able to get in your censored brushless motor is temperature. So what they would do is put a temperature probe, a temperature sensor right in with the sensor grouping. And from there, you'd be able to collect that information and send it back through that wire loom, back to the speed control in order to measure 
uh, the temperature. This is great for data logging if you're looking for that sort of information. With all these advantages of a censored motor, why would you ever want a sensorless motor? For a sensorless motor, it definitely does have its uh, place within the industry. So for sensorless motors, we talk about a lot about this uh, slow speed stuff. Well, sensorless motors actually perform very, very good at high speed. In fact, they perform so good at high speed that most censored setups don't actually end up using the sensors for high speed. It switches into another setting that we'll talk about very soon. So what we end up getting out of the uh, sensorless motors is excellent high speed performance. One of the advantages of a sensorless motor is you eliminate the sensors that are within your typical censored motor. And of course, this is a very small weight savings. And you know, a weight savings, it's not gonna be something substantial, but maybe in a smaller airplane, it'll be quite beneficial. Another advantage to a sensorless motor is you do not have that wire loom that's gonna go from the brushless motor to your speed control. That wire loom, can become damaged quite easily, especially when you have them in radio controlled cars. Let's jump into the applications of each types of these motors. So really when we're talking about censored motors, censored motors are only really good in the RC car truck uh, world. And the reason why is because censored motors, as we, as we described in our advantages, are very good right from zero RPM. When we're using a censored motor, we're looking for uh, very good torque at zero RPM. So where would you find that? Well, in radio control cars, rock crawlers is a very, very good example. When that rock crawler is sitting on a rock and it's wedged in there really tight and you have to apply a good amount of throttle to get over that rock, you're relying on torque at zero RPM, literally torque at zero RPM. A sensorless motor is not gonna be able to do that well. It's gonna stutter, it's gonna have a hard time getting in sync with the speed control in order to provide you with that torque. It's not gonna be all that well controlled either. So a censored motor is gonna give you that control at very low RPM. Very, very, very critical to anyone who's in the rock crawler area of RC. Um, another area where you may see it very beneficial, if there's someone who's looking for immediate acceleration right from zero RPM. Um, with a 1 8 buggy, for example, if you're gonna accelerate right from zero RPM, in some cases it may not be consistent um, or predictable. In certain, and this also really depends on the gearing that you have. As you increase and be, you have more taller gearing, it becomes a little bit more critical because the tall gearing will force your radio controlled setup to provide a good amount of torque at that very low RPM setting. In which case, if you are demanding a lot of power, you can get some significant spikes of power draw uh, right at that low RPM. Um, it's, the speed control is gonna try and overcompensate for what's going on and send a whole bunch of power and it's not gonna be able to use it effectively because it doesn't know the exact um, location of that rotor within the brushless motor. So now that we talked about you know radio control cars and trucks and all those things, what about all the rest of RC? Well, when we're talking about drones and we're talking about helicopters and airplanes and radio control boats and all these other sorts of RC uh, applications, a sensorless motor is actually quite fitting for both of these, for all of those, I should say. And the reason is, all of these applications that I just mentioned really don't need a tremendous amount of torque at zero RPM. In fact, they really don't need much torque at all. The only requirement there is for the synchronization process to be able to happen. So I have here a radio control 1 8 scale buggy that I wanted to talk about. So this radio controlled buggy here has your typical three wires coming from the motor and this is going to be your power wires that go right to the speed control. In addition to that on this censored motor that I have, I have the censored loom. So there's six leads that are inside of this loom. Um, at least one of those leads is going to be for temperature monitoring. So this does also include temperature monitoring as well. Now what's important about this and we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier is that this is a hybrid system. So what that means is at very low speed, 
I have a censored throttle response. So from right from zero RPM, I can hit that throttle and I have instant synchronization between the motor and the speed control. The speed control knows exactly where the position is and it's able to respond. So I have very low speed, great control. I'm able to punch the throttle and power is there immediately. Now what's interesting about this combination, it uses a Castle Creations ESC and that Castle, Castle Creations ESC allows for hybrid mode. Hybrid mode allows me to use a censored timing up at the low speed range and then once I get into high speed RPM it actually switches from a censored synchronization to sensorless synchronization. Um, the sensorless synchronization then allows for better efficiency and better performance up in that high RPM. So that's what's great about the hybrid system. It is able to use the sensors for the very low speed stuff. And then once you get out of that low speed stuff, and that's essentially when the, when the vehicle starts moving, once I'm out of that low speed stuff, I'm into the high speed area, in which case I'm able to still have the benefits of a sensorless system. And that's what I really like about it. It's kind of like has everything wrapped up in one nice package. Now, one of the last things that I wanted to talk about is what will what happen if you have a censored motor with a sensorless speed control only? What what happens in a situation like that? Well, a censored motor can perfectly work with a sensorless speed control. What's going to happen is that speed control doesn't have any room or area where you can plug in your censored loom. So you're going to only get sensorless performance out of that motor. The motor still acts as a you know typical sensorless motor, in which case it has the sensors, but they're just not being used. That brushless speed control can perfectly operate it and you won't notice the difference between one of your sensor sensorless motors versus this censored motor being operated as a sensorless motor. Now if you have the opposite happen where you have a censored speed control and you don't have a censored motor, you have a sensorless motor, you have to make sure that that speed control is able to operate in a sensorless mode. If it cannot operate in a sensorless mode, that will mean that that speed control is not able to operate that motor. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So that really covers it for this video, talking about, you know, the very basics of the sensorless versus sensor motors. Um, I hope you were able to get something out of that. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.